Faith marked one year since the devastating Lahaina wildfire, one of the deadliest in U.S. history. The fire claiming 102 lives and destroying more than 2,200 structures. A year later, the work of rebuilding the fire-ravaged area has begun, but it is far from over. Ellie Cochran represents Lahaina and Hawaii's state legislature, and she joins me now from Lahaina. Uh, j just about one year later from when you first joined us soon after the devastating wildfire a year ago. It's good to see you. Uh, you know, each and every day, and especially last week, we've been seeing, hearing more progress that has been made. In fact, we saw the governor highlighting new pods of homes that are now opening. Is that your reality on the ground? Not not um, exactly, I say. I don't want to take away for all the hard work that's been uh, put into, you know, cleaning up debris, restoring our infrastructure, putting in, you know, our water is good again in Lahaina, things of that nature. I'm not taking away from that. But I feel like the money that's spent on these uh, temporary homes could have gone, should be going to the actual people who lost their homes and their properties that are now uh, clear of debris, soil tested, all your infrastructure is in, all they need are per permits and they're good to go to build. So to help them get back on their feet to rebuild, I think that's where money would have been better spent. And, you know, unfortunately also the pods were purchased from out of the country. So the money has left even our own economy here. Uh, well, you mentioned this whole permitting process. That seems to be sort of the biggest problem that is keeping people from actually rebuilding. Is that fair to say? Yeah, on a lot of levels. In fact, a friend of mine said, "Where? why aren't people um, applying? The permit process has been going. Permits are being, uh, fees are being, and fast tracking can occur if you apply and ask for it, but yet no one's applying. So that's a big question as to where are the residential people and lot owners? Um, and also, you know, it's like get the, I think grandfathering should be should be thought about. People lost their homes to no fault of their own. And their house obviously was built. It was permitted by the county once upon a time. Just see what it was. Ask the owner, what do they want to do? Rebuild the same, build smaller, big, larger, whatever. But start addressing each and an individual tax map key and deed holder of that law and find out what they want to do and help assist them to get to where they want to go. Obviously, you're a, a Lahaina uh, Hawaii native. Uh, one of the other issues that you're seeing is this because of the lack of the rebuilding process, out migration. How severe of a problem is that? It was already a problem before the fire, and now I'm told at least 4,000 people or families have left. And it's just, it's so heart wrenching because what is Hawaii or what will Lahaina be without the people of our town? And that's what I'm afraid of. The longer we wait, the more people are leaving, and that's one less family, rooted generational family, who have been here and now are forced to leave because they can't hold their breath for a permit. They can't hold their breath because their insurance benef benefits are, are running out. You know, they're paying mortgages on empty lots that have ash on it. So I'd like to see more emergency proclamations, if that can help, to assist people. That's the role of government, I feel, to assist people. Rebuilding helps subsidize them in any way we can. Well, speaking of, you know, rebuilding, that's uh, what... Governor Josh Green has said as the one year was marked last year, he says first year was about surviving, the second year is about building housing. Is that reassuring to you? Because I'm getting the sense that you're frustrated with the lack of progress. Right. I mean, we've been in the mode of survival from before the fire. The cost of living here is outrageous. People have to work two, three jobs, mom and dad. And it, so we've been trying to survive anyways. And now to hear the governor himself say we're now in the rebuilding mode, I would suspect we were we were already. So I that was I was taken aback with those comments and that quote from him that first year survival. Second year, we're going to look into rebuilding. No, that should be occurring. And you know, at the end of the day, again, I said government's role is to subsidize and, and take care of our people. The only people who got bailed out all along have been the hotels. 
Mm. We were paying $45 million for our displaced to live in hotels, $45 million per month. So, so Add, divide that amongst the 2,200 people, you know, people who lost homes. Right. <laughs> We could have rebuilt. We have to wrap this up, but I just want quick clarification, if I could, uh, Representative Cochran. The vast majority of the locals who lost their homes, they still have not been able to rebuild. They still are not in a new home today, more than a year later. Right. They are not. Okay. They are not. There's temporary homes. Just the temporary housing. Okay. Right. No, they're not home. I want to keep them home. Well, we appreciate you uh, being with us all the way from Lahaina, uh, Hawaii Representative Ellie Cochran. Thank you. Of course, we'll continue to stay in touch with you. Thank you always for having me. Appreciate it. Aloha. Aloha.